This is Midweek Politics with Dave Pakman. Hey, welcome to the show. You know, it's been five years almost to the day that Midweek Politics has been on the air. So we have decided to give away an iPad. I don't actually have one of these, but I was playing around a little bit with one the other day. And I think people will like this thing. Here's the way we're going to do it. October 1st, it's about a month away. We're going to give away an iPad, and here's how it will go. If you are already a member, or if you become a member on midweekpolitics.com between now and October 1st, you're going to get 10 entries into this this, uh, iPad giveaway, and we'll randomly pick someone. Now, here's the thing. If you're, for whatever reason, I can't imagine why, Lewis, somebody wouldn't want to become a member with all all the extras you get. But let's say somebody didn't want to, but you still want that iPad. That's okay. You log on to midweekpolitics.com, you sign up for our newsletter. Everybody who is on the newsletter on October 1st, and this counts for all the people that are already on it, you get one entry into the iPad giveaway. I think that sounds fair, right? Everybody gets a chance. I know Lewis is already submitting like 15 different bogus uh, Hotmail accounts so that he gets on the iPad. But Lewis cannot win. I can't win. Nobody involved with the show can win. Uh, But that's that's the deal. So if iPad being given away... On October 1st, in honor of the five-year anniversary of the show, 10 entries for everybody who's a member on that date. So go to midweekpolitics.com, sign up. If you want to just get one entry in there without having to do anything at all, sign up for our newsletter on midweekpolitics.com. There's some concerns about Lewis going on. I've been getting emails, Lewis, from people. There's like a pro-Lewis contingent and there's an anti-Lewis contingent, so to speak. Um, here's, Here's one email that I received in the last week. Keep Lewis off the air. Let him produce, but get another sidekick, please. So some people desperate to have Lewis off the air. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, though, we did get a positive email about Lewis. Lewis is awesome. A lefty heavy metal headbanger? Come on, how can you get better than that? So I I don't know what to think. It seems that it's a controversial issue. It's a very polarized issue. Now, I thought we were having you cover up the tattoos is the only thing. That's really my big concern. You know, it's just too hot in the studio to be wearing long sleeves. Okay. All right. Well, we, got, we do have to work on that. I think that the, the Lewis image needs to, needs to not involve the tattoo. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it right now. <laughs> All right. It's going to get colder soon, and then I think we'll be able to, uh, to, we'll be in good shape. to resolve that. We had uh, a couple of primaries that I want to talk about. John McCain has held off J.D. Hayworth in Arizona. And J.D. Hayworth, he's a former Arizona congressman, and he was challenging John McCain for the Senate seat that McCain has held for a long time. And I'm glad, honestly, there's, you can say say whatever you want about John McCain. I'm glad J.D. Hayworth did not win in the Republican primary because he's, he's been doing these info, scam infomercials, these free money from the government infomercials. We played one a couple of months ago, and he also is considered a Tea Party candidate by some. I, given those two, I'm I'm glad that it's not J.D. Hayworth replacing John McCain in the in the Republican primary, don't you think, Lewis? Or are you a, a Hayworth guy? I'm no fan by any. I know means. you've fallen for some of those scam infomercials, so maybe you, you I have. Haven't you? I thought you had that incident. Um, no, I don't recall <laughs> this incident. In Florida, Democratic uh, Congressman Kendrick Meeks support trumped political newcomer Jeff Green's literally billion dollar bank account in what was definitely a hard-fought Senate primary on the Democratic side. Interesting to see now what will happen with Kendrick Meek. It, it was, it's interesting to me because he originally made some statements about retiring from Congress, and the implication was, even though obviously it wasn't the case, that maybe he's retiring from politics. Obviously not. Now, winning the Democratic Senate primary in Florida, that's one that I'm going to keep an eye on. Another interesting result from Arizona is Ben Quayle winning. We talked last week about Ben Quayle's claim that Barack Obama is the worst president in history and, of course, the son of of former Vice President Dan Quayle. And we went through a lot of the Dan Quayle quotes. Ben Quayle has won the primary. He essentially ran the the campaign from the right, calling Obama the worst president in history. Of course, the revelation that he was driving web, web traffic to a porno site didn't help him, but apparently it didn't hurt. Right. He did. He did win the primary with 23 percent of the vote. And uh, because of the number of candidates, that was you only needed 23 percent to win. So it's a lot of candidates and a lot of candidates that did probably surprisingly well, considering. Yeah. The closest competitor had 18 percent of the vote. And uh, so that's one to keep an eye on. I don't know what will happen. Uh, 
to me, the, the prospect of Ben Quayle in the House of Representatives is scary at the least. Um, in the Florida uh, Senate race, we had the Republican nomination already decided with Go Governor Charlie Crist conceding the nomination to Marco Rubio. Now, Chris then announced his intention to run as an independent, which makes the race really a wild card. We have Marco Rubio as the uh, Republican candidate. We have Charlie Crist as the independent candidate. And, uh, of course, the Democrats, as I said, nominating uh, Kendrick Meek over billionaire Jeff Green. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch. Rubio was, or rather, uh, Charlie Crist was criticized for being an Obama I don't even know what the term would be, a sympathizer, if, if that, that even makes sense, for hugging Obama at an event. And, uh, I mean, remember, Joe Lieberman made out with George W. Bush at a State of the Union address, and he's been an independent and successfully, from his point of view, at that. I think it helped his career. Kissing George W. Yeah. Bush. It, it did. We'll see what happens with, uh, with Chris. Now, uh, a couple of other, one other really interesting one is that Lisa Murkowski it's as of right now, when we're going on the air, it is unknown what happened in the uh, up, up in Alaska. Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski, at the last time I checked, was actually trailing her Tea Party backed opponent by a small margin. And this was um, with still thousands of votes to be counted. Apparently, I, every time I say Alaska is rural, I get angry emails. But apparently, because of the rural nature, of a lot of these precincts, it is taking some time to count the votes. And of course, Joe Miller is the Tea Party Tea Bagger candidate that is that is challenging Lisa Murkowski in, in Alaska. And the last I, I checked, he was actually ahead by a little bit. A lot of people are throwing Sarah Palin's name into the mix here, saying that if Lisa Murkowski loses, what does it say about Sarah Palin, so on and so forth? We'll see. I don't want to get ahead, but it would be interesting it, in some senses, some would say it would be horrible, but it would be interesting nonetheless if we have another Tea Party candidate beating the incumbent Republican senator in Alaska, would it not? Well, considering the state, is it still as interesting? I don't think so. Considering what? The state. Alaska. Yeah. Seems there's a lot of, a lot of Tea Partiers in Alaska. Well, yeah, I don't know. It, it, what, it's, the interesting thing to me is Sarah Palin, and we'll talk about how she's involved in the Dr. Laura scandal. Sarah Palin is, is just throwing, throwing her opinions around everywhere. In some places, it's helping. In some places, I don't think it is. And we'll, just, we'll see where that one uh, shapes up. That's her mission, just to say as much as possible <laughs> in as many places as possible. And, and possibly to set up for a presidential run in 2012. I don't doubt it. And, and she certainly would have a platform to do that as a Fox News employee. Midweek Politics is made possible in part by CSR Wire, the corporate social responsibility newswire at csrwire.com, by DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. To find out more about underwriting Midweek Politics, visit midweekpolitics.com.